Bye. Do you stay around here? What are you doing, taking pictures? I am taking pictures. Well, I want to make a tape about the neighborhood, about Blissville. How the hell do you know this is Blissville? <laughs> <laughs> If you give this address to someone, I mean, they could drive them around for hours and not find it. For me to live in it, it, it does have that special, special quality, something about it. I don't hear this from many people. This is blissful, but a lot of people know blissful. I'll go up to Sunnyside and maybe buy the news or something, or go play the, the lottery. And the guys will say, well, you live down in Blissville. I said, how the hell do you know it? He said, well, I've been living up here for 60 years. I'm talking about the old timers now. Gene, why do they call it Blissville? It was a Blissville territory. Yeah. No, that I really don't know why they called it Blissville. Blitzville? Blissville. 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 I was born down one of them houses down here. I live up there. There's the old PS80 school I went to and graduated from it. Now it's a hotel, yeah. Actually, all of Blissville uh, takes up maybe, I don't know how you would measure it in square feet, but it's just one big block around the corner and maybe a couple of blocks here and there. There's not that much involved, you know what I'm saying? When I worked on Wall Street in a brokerage house in 1927, that was in that crash. Like I say, I'm 82. This was February, it was 82. Now, I worked down on Wall Street, and all these big shots from out in the island, you know, brokers. Where do you live, Joe? Oh, I live in Blissville. Yeah, where the hell is that? Oh, it's a little place past the Hamptons, I used to tell them. And they didn't know the difference. So what the hell, I had to play big shot the same as them, and I bullshitted them, and they believed me, and all they did was live here. <laughs> because nobody knew where the hell Blissville was. They couldn't find it on a map. I'd pinpoint a place like the Hamptons or here and here. This is where it is. It's a little janky town. <laughs> Years ago, this was just all plain farmland. Originally, this house I live in was just a big yard. My parents had a store, grocery store, down that block. And this, that house was a big yard. When they sold the grocery store, they built this house on the money they received from selling the grocery store. And I live in my mother's house. My parents are long far gone now. And it's really the old folks mostly have passed away. And it's their children now that are taking over the neighborhood, you know?
Well, some this picture I love. This is an old wedding. Oh, uh, this beautiful. is pop. I think that's beautiful yeah, because they're not yeah. they're not dressed you in haven't? unison. They all did their own thing, which they don't do today. You know, the bridesmaids are all the same. I thought this was cute. First thing you know, she worked in there and she became a supervisor. Then she became my boss. And then we finally got married. I couldn't get rid of her. <laughs> she was always there to me, so I figured, what the hell, I got married. So I got married. And then we had that three-day wedding right down here in Bristol. That's the way the Pollocks used to do it, three days to get married. The first day, it was an all-night affair. Then you came back the next night. Uh, Monday, you'd go to work and come back Monday night for a supper. It went on forever. In them days, you had... It was the long table, and everybody stood over here, the bride, groups, and everybody. The bride and the maid stayed there, and they had regular dishes, dinner plates. They used to put them there. You put one down there, and the people, as they came by, they put the cash right on the line, and bam, you had to hit the plate with your hand to break it for luck. And the barbage band put a new one up, let somebody else put something on and break it again. The old routine. <laughs> My father used to get up very early in the morning, go to the market at five o'clock, and had a horse and wig in them days. And my mother said she'd be working in the store and waiting for my father to come home from the market early in the morning. You know what would happen? The horse and wig and came and back alone, and my father would be around the corner in the bar and grill talking to his friend. They were all a very friendly group, all the bar owners, all the store owners. On Sundays, we would have outings. We'd go to Lake Ronkonkoma. That was a favorite. They'd get up early in the morning, start making the pork chops and all the chickens, and they'd pack it, and all the kids would get in the cars, and off we'd go on a Sunday. My name is, the full name is Sayed Muhammad Shah. Where, where are you from? Uh, I come, I'm from Afghanistan. Afghanistan, Afghanistan 1971. Do you call this neighborhood now? Willisville. Many people look at the uh, old photograph, but people just not pay attention to it. Good. A lot of people, a lot of people are interested to buy that picture. Yes? Sure. But uh, I refuse to give it to them and I would like to put that in a frame, is what I'm gonna do is I fix the store and I put the same name, Blessed, which is gonna be nice. Can you name some of the different countries? Colombia. Colombia, Mexico, Bolivia, Argentina. Chile, uh, Russia. Russia. Where are you from? Jack? I'm from Bolivia. Poland, Poland. Poland, Poland. this is a Polish neighborhood. Everywhere. And, uh, also Dominican. from Pakistan, from uh, India, from uh, China, from uh, Korea, from, uh, you name it. You learn. Uh, it's as you learn the different languages. So. Yeah. What's your which languages you learning? Well, I got a chance to learn some words in uh, India, you know, uh, Persian. Persian. See, as an advantage um, of being Muslim is that we all have the same common background, we all have the same basic knowledge, and we all try to, um, we endeavor to speak the Arabic language. So therefore, no matter where you run into another Muslim, you have a foundation for friendship always. Do you, and do you speak some of the Arabic language? I didn't know that. Uh, my pronunciation is not that yeah. superb. I speak Arabic with an American accent, but in so uh, in time. So sometimes do you speak to him a little bit in Arabic, like? Uh, I asked him a few things. Well, it's been a while, right? Uh, does he talk pretty fast in Arabic? They all talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> From where in Turkey, do you know? Istanbul. <laughs> how many times? How many times do you go around? Extra English, no. Punjabi, India. India. Andi.
Oh, it's Pollock, uh, Irish, not like Greeks coming in here oh, now. Yeah? And uh, Indians or whatever they are, you know, I don't even bother them. They're down further in them big farming houses down there. That big house down there, I think it's a, it's a it must be a, a factory. It's not a factory, but an office building. You know what I'm talking about? Is that an office building or what? I don't even know. I don't go down there. I don't want to know nothing about it. You live here or do you just work here? No, I'm a cab driver from Africa. Where? Which country? Liberia. Liberia. Yeah. How long are you here now? Oh, too long to quit. <laughs> it's time to run. <laughs> Well, it used to be a nice area, you know. It's not anymore? No, because all these warehouses got very commercial. They were all homes here. It was beautiful. There was a house on that corner. They knocked it down. They built that factory there. So a lot of houses have been replaced by factories. Yeah. Once they yes. commercial. Well, you know, yeah. it is, this, is, this area now is zoned it's M1, which means now if you take down some, you can't build anything residential. Right? You have to build factory on it. You can't build a house, you know, where somebody could live in. We make over a million cookies a day. The, the diner is happy after a meal in the Chinese restaurant. Nobody exactly knows what the history of fortune cookie is. Some say that it's been rented by a Chinese back in the early 1900s, a restaurant owner, I believe. And, uh, but I believe the, um, the history Okay, or the idea of putting a slip of paper in a cookie based loosely in Chinese history. Because back in those days, the first part of the country was uh, ruled by different warlords. And some of these rebels they used a, a kick, uh, what they call a moon kick, and they put the slips of paper in there to communicate among themselves. They are going to be building the first fortune cookie factory in mainland China. We take some of the existing ones that we are already using and we translate them into uh, Chinese. And uh, we use some of those, and all, we also have someone in China to write the, uh, the you know, to write some of their own. And then, you know, we translate that back into English and, and so forth. Because the, the fortune is going to be bilingual. Can you give examples of some of the, the kind of fortunes that would be in China? It's like a proverbs, Chinese proverbs, OK? Uh, I believe one of them says, uh, True gold fears no fire, you know. <laughs> what does it uh, mean? Well, the, you know, if you're authentic, I mean, you know, you would not be afraid of, uh, you know, the, of being challenged by other people. You know. lunch every day?
exclusive license to produce the replica of Statue of Liberty. And uh, that's something you have to change. If you look, uh, you, you have to modify the entire face because it's missing the bone here. The face is too sweet and uh, look like uh, it's a baby. It's not the mature woman which represents something. Everything is good, everything except the face has to be changed. We'll do the same. I'd like to see them have working conditions. That's the way I look at it. I'm bitching for myself, but how the hell could you work in a place like that with all them fumes and everything that's in there and have not one goddamn window in a place? Look at the office, beautiful air conditioning and everything, huh? Double windows, double doors. They don't hear nothing. Air conditioning and them poor guys. In the summer, they work with their pants on. You complaining to politicians? Did you complain to the politicians? Pull your prick. Yeah. <laughs> What's he used to talking about it? You come around here and you see for yourself what goes on. They stay here like 20 minutes and all covered. One, like this with cover, let me put the cover, you see? Like this would close it, everything close. When they're ready, they open it to make the bread. Some bread here. Mexicano, thank yeah. you from Mexico. Okay, can you Habla aquí, what, que tú eres de Mexico. Country, yo, yo soy de México. México. Me de México. Eso. It looks warm back here. This is the bread come from the oven. 
And do they make this kind of bread in Afghanistan? Yeah, exactly the same, the same way we make Afghanistan. Do you learn to make it there? Uh, I learn here. Okay. Somebody, my, my cousin teach me. But the bread is very good, everybody loves it. All natural, whatever we make here, like homemade bread. Just flour and water, a little bit yeast, very light salt. What do we call it, flat bread? Uh, Afghan bread, yeah, flat Afghan bread. Afghan. Long flat, you can call it like this. And how long have you been making it? How long I have I bought this business? Yes. Uh, 10 years. Like Are you the largest Afghan bakery in the city? There's only one, that's me. How you doing? All right, man. I'm the general manager of this hotel, which is known as the Best Western City View Motor Inn. Before the hotel, this building was a school, and after the public school, for, for some time, for some years, it was changed into a yeshiva. And then from yeshiva, it became as a hotel. It's a blissville. This neighborhood is known as a blissville. And besides that, if you look on the north of the hotel, you will see that this area is full of uh, these uh, uh, Polish people. If you look on the south, this, there's an uh, uh, Indian, there's a Pakistani, there's a Bangladeshi people. If you look at the West, they're all Spanish people live over here. So this is just like a multinational people, you know, they live around the hotel. Quite a color. Okay, thanks. What's your name? Ali. Ali? Where did you get these? I did the research on 42nd Street, uh, 42nd Street Library. In the... And Blissville yeah. was the owner of the farmers around here. And that's why it's called Blissville. Was it Nazia Bliss, you know? I have, I have the, all the research that I did upstairs. Yeah, that's good. That's Boy, those older people, they never had a smile on their face. <laughs> really? Right here. This is the name Blissby, and, and then we are around this point. Now you can walk one, two o'clock in the morning, and someone from the corner in the darkness will say, Hello, how are you, Tony? And it's really, everyone is very friendly. You can park cars, trucks, 
there's no restriction. It's like a little triangle. they make uh, the babies to go off, then they don't come no more. Pigeons every morning, sparrows, all kinds of birds. I come from the island of Cyprus, yeah. Tell me your name. Jimmy. The restaurant? G&G &G Diner. What's G&G &G stand for? Well, it used to be Gus and George. But uh, that's uh, 26 years ago. This like is basil. basil. I have pepper there. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Is that a hot pepper? Yes. For fertilizer. It's a compost. Yeah. How'd you, learn to, how'd you learn the garden, Jim? Yeah, I used to watch my grandfather. I used to, I have potatoes in there, potato peels, carrot peels, onion peels, everything. And I, plus I throw coffee in there, I mix it all up. That's what I use in here. This must be more than just oh, sure, yeah. money. You must enjoy this garden. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like today, we had meatballs and spaghetti in the diner, and I cut uh, four of these leaves and I threw it in the sauce. It's things like this. What, you call this area yeah. over here, over this way, you call it Blissville? No. You ever hear this term? Did anybody ever use it? No, I never heard of that. Long no Island kidding. City, I heard. Oh, okay, because there's a little section over here, like Borden and Review and stuff that uh, well, people Borden call Well, Borden and Review is right over there. Yeah. And people, some people call it Blissville. I don't know. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the old name. Yeah, I never Before heard it was that. part of Long Island City. I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask. I'm going to inquire. Thank you. 
Those are cars. Yep. a silent she was a superstar in the silent era uh, she she co-starred with Val, uh, Rudolph Valentino I believe Lon Chaney and uh, I think Ronald Coleman but you know the big stars in the 20s and sound ended her career I believe and uh, I know I read in Hollywood Babylon that she was addicted to drugs and that she died uh, I believe she died an addict I think she I believe she was 62 when she died she was a beauty she was a she was a, you know, like uh, Marlena Dietrich or uh, Greta Garbo Dark, in her so day. Pretty. Dark. She was a, a vampire, like a vamp, set of bear. There were a lot of them. side of the VQ, yeah. It's a little isolated neighborhood called Blissville. It's called Blissville? With about well, it used to houses, be. Yeah. used to be, I think what maybe before they built the LIE and stuff. What do they call it now? Did I still call it? Now it's part of Long Island City, city now. Oh. We talked to some old people that remembered the name, you know. Really? Yeah. There was you a, know, I've been here all my life. I've never heard of Blissville. Yeah, Blissville. Why, my name is Chris. Chris. Right. How long have you been living in, in Rosemary? All my life. All your life. 
How long are your neighbors? A lot of lives. Gypsy weddings? Gypsy weddings. I mean, when I say cars, I mean cars. They're from all of them. Trucks, anyway. They will fall all around here. They're really nice. They're really beautiful. They have music. They're very, very... They dance in the street. There would be what? music outside. Well, yeah, they have their guitars and saxophone players. Yeah. And they have a, Get yeah. music and everything. How often is that? Well, Not they have one now. Yeah. Many moons ago, they used to have um, a gypsy camp. Down here. Down Maurice Avenue, Avenue. Just before or right after the... Uh, um, oh, Maurice, Maurice Avenue Avenue's Avenue. an exit, yeah. You know, yeah. They, that wasn't there at that time. It used to be down. all, you know, all out. Even the park wasn't there. Oh, yeah. And uh, they used to have a gypsy camp down there. They never bothered anybody. How long ago was that, would you say? Oh, oh I would God. say a good 50 years ago. Because oh. yeah, they used to go to the same school that we did. Oh, my yeah? mother lived yeah, there. Yeah, they, they used to go right here to PS 86. And my yeah. parents lived there when my brother was born. Oh, yeah. They never really yeah. bothered anybody. No. You know? Just the, the way they were living. We lived in houses. They lived, they lived like in shacks and that, you know, whatever they yeah. were able to make out of it. Kind of mobile homes or something. Oh, no, not shacks. at that time. Really at that shacks. time, there were shacks. Really shacks. Yeah. The church where the gypsies got married. Oh, yeah, the gypsies got married there, too. But there was a place that, where there were a lot of gypsies and things like that. Oh, listen, there was a lot of gypsies around there. That's right. Odds and ends of gypsies. A lot of fortune tellers. Yeah, they around knew, here? Uh, right, right, he says, that between here and uh, Mansbitt. Yeah, they, in, in the woods there. This was all woods over here, you know. Yeah. What's there now? That's the, that's now you the got the, whatever, you got factories now. You, you have a gas station, gas, station. Gas, gas station on a corner and yeah. everything. That's so whatever right. else, they're building. Now you grew up not far from here, right? Right. Where, where was this? I was born in Maspeth in Laurel Hill. And, um, well, it used to be a gypsy camp at that time. You want me to tell you from yeah. when I was like a kid, right? Yes, sir. Right? And it was, uh, my people are Romanian gypsies, and they all came from Laurel Hill, Maspeth. And uh, some people took over the property and they had to move out. Donna, where was the property exactly? On Maurice Avenue. So is it where the ball field was, or was it where the highway is? I really don't remember. I was like six years old at the time. Uh -huh. That was here because the people stuck in the woods around here. The gypsy thing. How do you mean? They... Huh? How do you mean? I don't know. Ask him. He's going to. All right. We interviewed a woman this morning uh, who we think grew up here. She was a gypsy. And she said there used to be a large gypsy encampment here. And I think that maybe it was right where the park is. That I know of. How, how long have you lived here? About 32 years. We I know there used to be a gypsy caravan down along the east Sam, near the Dead End Street. But not on near the cemetery. That's where it used to be. So where are we talking about then? You're talking about where that building is, right that there. white one, all back there. They were running up as far. I don't know what kind of old shacks they were here. When the houses were knocked down, were people upset? I mean, oh, yes. They figured they had nowhere to go. But they found apartments on the south side. And did the community sort of move together, or did people split up? No, they all moved in the same area. Uh -huh. They were all like on South 3rd Street, South 4th Street, South 5th Street. It's they all seem to have stayed in the same area. Have a lot of them stayed around here still? The younger generation, um, I have a few cousins that still live in the area. But most of the older people died. And they were the ones that used to wear the, the gypsy costumes. They used to make them themselves. Uh -huh. You know, colorful material and everything. And some of them had stores where they uh, told fortunes. They had like shanties at that time. They weren't fixed up that great, but they were clean. A bed, a living room, table, chairs, you know, and it was kept clean. We had enough food all the time to eat. Did you speak Romanian? Yeah, we, we speak Romanian. Yeah. Yes. So you learned, do you still remember it very much? Some words I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. Before that time, did you feel like you were sort of separate from like the people living in the apartments? Oh, yes. I had a hard time in school. Were kids... Uh... It was sad in school, yeah. yeah. I was like an outcast to them. When they would find out that I was Romanian, they used to call us names. They wouldn't bother with us. We were like different than them. And then I think we were, you know, in a way. We were in, like, caught up in a modern type of living like they were. It was kind of hard. 
Were they also afraid of just this like mystique of gypsies? Like right, that's what they probably were afraid of, that we're going to rob them all the time. But we weren't raised that way. No, we weren't. Yeah. We would work all the time. I am not, not like the, they say gypsies are, are thieves and everything. But if, if you let someone talk you into something that's not right, whose fault is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Right, right. yeah. I never bother with them. I don't believe in that stuff. I guess you show me a glass ball and go like this, who the hell are they to tell me, or oh, look in the palm of my hand, I show them the wrinkles, that's all I got. <laughs> the men had trucks. They had trucks. They got into construction. Well, my father used to drive a truck. He used to work for D'Agostino. And uh, my mother used to sell artificial flowers. She used to make them herself and go from door to door. And that's how they made a living. Well, my mother was matched up with my father. They matched them up. They really didn't go out together. They, the family said, you have to marry him, and then it was so. And they used to drink out of a bottle of liquor, and then they would have a wedding after. The girl didn't even really know the man, and vice versa. They didn't know each other, but they, they went through with it, with the wedding. And they had bears. My uncle's name was Bibi. He had bears. And his bears used to be in the circus. He had three bears. These were dancing bears? Yeah, they danced, yeah. Mm -hmm. We used to show business with them. You have to remember the bears' names? Rosie and Bill. I don't remember the other one. Mm -hmm. He used to keep them in a big truck parked outside of his house. And he kept them in a big you know, big truck like with the cage locked. And they were bad. They weren't tame either. You know, he had to put a muzzle on them. Then sooner or later they, they got violent and he had to get rid of them. He put them in the zoo. Now they're in Prospect Park, I think. I don't know if they're still alive, but one of them bit his daughter while she was feeding him. He bit her leg. But it was funny though when uh, we keep them locked up and they used to growl and the people in the neighborhood was, was complaining. So that's when he had to get rid of them. But he made a good living out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could have been here where the park was. I'm not sure though. Mm -hmm. Because the cemetery was like across the street from where we used to have the shanties at, you know? You see what the expressway is? Yeah. But where the expressway was all houses. And the gypsies went from all the way from Newtown Creek all the way to the Corona. They had to, you know, all, they were spread out. It was like a little wooden house that, that they had built themselves, I think. I didn't think they made them themselves. There was like a little shanties, and we would stay near the shanty. We weren't allowed out. So I remember like, made out of wood. Not very fancy. They weren't very modern. The electricity? No, they had kerosene lamps and they had an ice box. That's what I wanted to tell you. They had no refrigerator. They had an ice box that they put ice in it. It wasn't easy for them. It was, a, was it a pot belly stove? To pot belly stoves, to yes. Heat up. To heat up. To heat up the, the house. And they had another stove that they would put wood in it and coal, I think, to cook on. Was it very cold in the wintertime? Yes. Yeah, it wasn't that warm. They hadn't, we didn't have many toys. Nothing to play with, really. We used to play ball a lot and hopscotch. Yeah, we weren't allowed to mingle too much with the other children. It kept us to ourselves. And Robin Moses was the only guy that, uh, he started the World Fair, and he got them out of there. By 1940, they were all gone. They were gone, you know, they, they, uh, they had stores up here on Grand Street, and uh, uh, the other ones moved to Brooklyn, I heard. The official theme of the World's Fair was to be Building the world of tomorrow, Democracy. the sort of place where all Americans would soon be living. City planners and functionalist architects believed they knew what the future had to be like and what ordinary Americans had to learn to live successfully in it. They intended to make a working model of tomorrow in Flushing Meadow and then convinced Grover Whalen to go out and sell their tomorrow to the world. Thank you very much. Congratulations and every good wish for success. Every good wish to you. Thank you. Uh, did your mother ever talk about, like, when your 
recall that they ever talk about the time when they had a move from the Shannon Tech? Or, yes, know? it happened all of a sudden. And you got to move really fast? Yes, uh huh. They wanted the property. I don't know for why. But yeah, they made them move very fast. I think the city passed a law or whatever. To, they couldn't live here. And they got them out of here, and, and they were from there all the way down to the car there. That's what they were. How many were there? Oh, there were seven hundred. Families. Hundred people all together? Or more, there must be. I would think there must be hundred people all together. As a matter of fact, when the holidays had come, I don't know what's their holidays. Holidays that get the, the, the hogs and they'd have them on the... Sure. In, in the music, in dancing? Yeah, yes, right. Oh, sure. I, I, I remember that. Well, there's one thing, though. When we lived on South Fish Street, we had a Jewish synagogue next door to us. And my mother was very friendly with them because they spoke Romanian. And they accepted my mother, really. They got along very good. And I used to put the gas on for them or off on a Friday. How do you mean, put the gas on or off? They didn't, they didn't, they couldn't touch the gas. The and the light switches, I had to put them on for them, yeah. These are what we call the Hasidic? Yeah, they're just Hasidic Jewish, yes, uh-huh. They got along so well because they both spoke Romanian language. Hi. Hey, I'll Hi. Meet you here. Let's take a picture of the valley. It's beautiful. Can I take your picture? Good morning. Television. Dar nu puteți merge fiindcă da. e film, deci nu e fotografie, e film, așa că puteți să vă faceți fiecare ce vreți. Hai, poa, să duci acolo în jumbolia. Îmi face noi cu lucrăm noi bijătorii. Filmul doi. Vă dați pe urmă. Auzi? Nu mi-l vin din mie ăsta. Aparatul? Da. Ce lasă 60 de mii în timp? Ce faci? 60 de mii în timp. Ce faci? 60 de mii în timp. Andoiaș, andoiaș, județul Iași, mandai. 
Ando comunul șuriu, ca ai căras, e harcu mai, uși. Ca ai căras, e bacerii, e gajin, e la nevoi. Ca ai servit stara, e gajin, foarte but. And meanwhile, back in the States... And I interviewed you 22 years ago. At that time, I was probably 20 years younger. No, 20 years 22 older. years younger. I'm still working for the hotel. You like it? Well, if I didn't like it, I won't be here.
you want to say your name? Oh, I'm Rebecca Cooney. And you live where? And I live in Blissville. I take it you're Irish. You take it right. <laughs> <laughs> you take it right. <laughs> but how did an Irishman come to work in a Jewish cemetery? That's the last place the devil will look for an Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> <And so. laughs>